This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Good afternoon. My name is Ray Tsuchiyama for another exciting show on business in Hawaii. It's a sultry, hot, humid afternoon in the tropical city of Honolulu, the capital of the state of Hawaii. And it's going to be an exciting show because I share this dialogue on entrepreneurship, on education, on giving young people a chance in college with a younger version of myself who graduated from the same high school, Wallace Ryder Farrington High School, in the beautiful neighborhood of Kalihi Palama, adjacent to downtown, and a census tract of over 40,000 residents, which means that compared to the little island of Molokai, with 7,500, wow, Kalihi Palama by itself is many times larger and has a long history that dates back before the war, World War II, and currently has uh, a very vibrant, multi-ethnic, multi-religious uh, makeup. And my guest name is Trayvon Watase, and welcome to the show, Trayvon. Thank you so much for having me. Now, you're a young man out of high school, uh, Farrington High School, and you, you are in midst of a journey, I would say, to become a successful entrepreneur. Am I correct? Well, yeah, let's hope so. I mean, that's definitely the path that we want to go down. So Okay. Yeah. So why don't you tell me, or tell the others, the origins of the journey. I guess I don't know where you can start with <laughs> your childhood or with your, uh, uh, you know, in middle school. Uh, and where did it really start that was a spark or the background to leading to our entrepreneur's journey? Um, for, so for me, it was basically just seeing a problem. So I, like you said, I graduated from Farrington. And when I went to Farrington High School, I um, applied for scholarships. And unfortunately, I didn't do so well in my first two years of co uh, high school. And my last two years, I did really well. But that averaged out to a low GPA, so it was really hard for me to apply to colleges and apply to scholarships. Um, and I felt that a lot of scholarships, the way that they were, they didn't really listen to my story. They had this, oh, you need a 2.5 GPA or 3.5, whatever it is, in order for us to even hear out your story. So um, I decided to create a scholarship of my own. I decided to eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for one week out of every month just to save 50 bucks so I could pay for a $500 scholarship. Um, and then, you know, with $500 in my hand, this was right out of high school, um, you know, three, four years ago. Yeah. Well, actually, a little bit longer than that now. Um, you know, no one would take my money because the dollar amount was too little. And that's when I just was kind of in awe about, like, there's people out there who want to give out $500, right. $1,000, $5,000 right. scholarships, but there's no channel for them to do so. Yeah. And it's not like kids don't need the money. Yeah. Um, and especially so so it's a, you were trying to create efficiency in a marketplace of yeah. getting people to meet each other, right? People who want to donate a scholarship and people who want a scholarship. Exactly. Okay. And I started out by trying to give up my own scholarship and <laughs> stumbling into that problem. It I was inefficient. No... It, was, it was ineffective. You faced an obstacle. Exactly. Okay. So that's just how it started. I just stumbled into it. I had no plans. My, my goal in life um, as soon as I graduated Farrington was to become a CPA. And you know, go to Scheidler, get my uh, master's degree in accounting, and go right, to the CBA right. firm. Um, but then I just stumbled into it, and that's how I got started. Okay, so so uh, after you uh, uh, made this uh, discovery or insight, mm -hmm. suddenly you saw what was out there was not so efficient, and that there uh, was a gap, you know, that you wanted to fulfill in, in this in this uh, marketplace. Uh, what did you do? Or did you go to uh, mentors? Did you seek out people who did um, scholarships or, or, uh, or uh, startups? What exactly did you start to do? So I was very lucky. So one of the scholarships I got right out of high school was a Rotary scholarship. And it was specifically, it was called the Diamonds in the Rough scholarship. They didn't <laughs> look for a high yeah. GPA. And I was really lucky where, you know, they connected me with the local Rotary Club. They're actually located in this building. 
Um, and then, you know, I, I, they kept on inviting me to the lunch, I mean, the breakfasts. Right, right, right. And I got to meet a lot of oh. people there. So that was like my first mentor network that I just right. got early access to. And basically because we were starting a website and I didn't have any computer science background, no technological right. background at all, it took me a year and a half just to finally get the first site up. So while I'm, you know, talking to developers and things like that and learning on my own, um, there was really, all I could do was kind of pick the brains of other people and Rotary so, was my So you're, time. you're actually going to school and doing a startup at the same time? That's correct. Okay, Just on your own. college. <laughs> okay, yeah. all right. Anybody come to mind who gave you the best advice or, or I, I know that you were meeting people at the Rotary, which mm -hmm. would expose you to all kinds of business people in downtown, right? Yeah. Local business people. But you needed something more, I think, uh, in your special app. I mean, you yeah. needed, so, so it, wasn't, it isn't that everybody in downtown are doing mobile apps or e-commerce. Uh, where did you go for more in-depth kind of uh, focus? So uh, I got really lucky, and I, I'm glad you brought that up, because yeah, oh, there's great mentors uh, that I got from Rotary, but not a lot of great mentors <laughs> when it came to, like, hey, right. that's how you build an app, right? right? right. Um, I got really lucky. I joined a co-working space. Uh, so, you know, I just went the traditional route, which was like, okay, go to India, uh, hire developers there, right. and then that didn't work out, and then try and find somebody, and things like that, it just didn't work out, well, nothing was working. You mean you did actually go to India? Yeah. Really? Well, I, mean, I didn't, like, fly to India, oh, oh, oh. but, um, you know, we used the online site to right, find, right, right, right. To so find you, an agency. So you contacted people in India to do some uh, coding for you, yeah. I guess, so for your for your app, okay. Exactly. <laughs> so that's a very, uh, so you're going to places where people uh, take years to go to, but you're, like, doing shortcuts, in a sense. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, but yeah, that I mean, those things didn't work out, unfortunately. Uh, lost some money there, or quite a bit of money there. And um, what do you call that? I joined a co-working space here in Hawaii, and I started working on it there. This guy from uh, D.C. was just like, oh, I'm going to go on vacation in Hawaii, and I'm going to yeah. get some work done and work at this co-working space. Uh, needless to say, me and him uh, connected, and he built his, he actually comes from a technical background, right, right. and he comes from a startup background. Oh. He's raised... Uh, money for multiple of his companies, and he's doing quite well. And he really took me under his wing, and you know, to this day we we talk, you know, quite often and talk about whatever you know problems come with the business. So you had an idea, but you needed, uh, I guess, uh, technical resources in a way. Yeah. <laughs> but you found a person who had kind of technical resources plus a business background, I yeah. guess, and then that you put it together at that point. Yeah, exactly. And oh, this is just go where it was. So I spent a year and a half trying to build the website. This guy, you know, we're talking for a while, right. but he spends one late night with me of just building out the entire site. Wow. And he just shows me, you know, the ins yep. and outs, how to do it. All I needed was that one, you know, what was that five yeah. hours or right. something to actually kickstart to get everything going. So when, when uh, exactly when was that breakthrough moment? About a year and a half ago, okay. maybe two years. So a year and a half ago, suddenly things began to open up. Uh, I mean, like, when I said like, yeah. we spent five hours on it, right. it was not a nice-looking site. <laughs> it was, it, um, actually, how we first started off our yeah. site was we just, like, had something the equivalent to, like, a Google form. Right. So the student would yeah. make their account through yeah. via Google form, right. and me or someone else on my team would actually manually input every single entry into the database. Wow. It was uh, it was not the best looking Very thing. Very primitive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. So so but you had a beginning there. You could beginning. see the ending, but you had to get there. <laughs> but you, you you could have uh, at least a uh, beginning to uh, on the journey there. Mm -hmm. uh, so what happened next? Uh, did you uh, look for uh, more um, advice or training or, or background f uh, for startups? Um, so I was lucky where um, our school. So I was um, at this time. I went to I was at Leeward Community College. Um, and then, but Pacific Asian Center of Entrepreneurship at the University of Hawaii, uh, Manoa Shiloh College of Business, you know, I got connected with them and they offered a lot of resources. They had uh, multiple business plan competitions they sent me out on, um, you know, other resources, professionals and residents and all those things. Um, we also be got access to the Shiloh students. They assembled a team of interns to help out with the operations of it. That you were the accept. same age as them, no. <laughs> or, or they're even older than you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Majority, yeah. yeah, if they were MBA students, in fact. You know? um, we didn't pick up our first MBA student until recently, but, you know, undergrads. Right, you know, right, right. Or recent graduates. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, the, that was the next step for us is actually getting connected to Pace, and okay. they provided the resources and a little bit of capital too. So you had a, a I guess, a base or shell to work out of for uh, for, uh, for a while. Definitely. Uh, okay, so, so th that's great. So so that uh, so that moved your journey a, a bit more to um, to make your uh, product more robust or something that you could put up and people could see and mm -hmm. kind of kind of uh, give you more input. So uh, how what was the next phase after that? Uh, next phase after. Um, like pace specifically to start entrepreneurship is you know i got connected to uh went up to san francisco um and i was just going there for a conference i meet up with this hawaii guy mckinley grad um and he, he's doing a startup talked to him and he convinced me to move up to san francisco within five weeks oh, so, <laughs> so um so when you're young you can make these uh, yeah, you, you know uh, instant decisions but i think in retrospect you know, it, it, it led you into the whole new world of Silicon Valley. Definitely. Yeah. So that was the next step for me. So I was um, living in um, San Francisco for the past year now. Oh, wow. And, um, you know, just you got connect, I got connected to just a lot more people and just different, like, people doing the same thing. And everywhere you turn in, like, a coffee yeah. shop or something like that, you maybe see a venture capitalist <laughs> right. or uh, someone writing them talking about, right. like, a multi-million dollar deal and how they're building this app with right. AI or blockchain right. or yeah. something. And it's like, you don't hear those conversations. So getting exposed to those conversations also helped. Well, you're correct. The, the, what we uh, call the ecosystem, you know, mm -hmm. the, uh, the venture capital, the money, the uh, uh, Stanford's and Berkeley's, the universities, the ideas, and immigrants, as you know, China, from China, India, all merged together, and they talk each other, especially, as you know, the Sand Hill Road uh, Starbucks. <laughs> and that's a place where I used to hang out, too. And, and you're correct that they w would invest or also uh, know the talent pool, which is very deep. And so venture capitalists can provide or refer to uh, C-level uh, people who can be inserted, embedded into startups and really get things going, uh, or the technical resources, the CTOs and engineers and so forth. And, and not only in um, uh, the Valley, but also uh, uh, leveraging uh, talents abroad, you know, in, in China or India or Russia, wherever they are. So, so you're correct that that whole uh, heady atmosphere doesn't exist in many other places. Yeah. Right? So, in, so you've been there a year. Uh, so, and you're here in uh, you're back and forth in Hawaii often. Yeah. I would t think. Uh, so what what is your what are you trying to do next? Uh, are you have you built your uh, app to a point that is robust enough to go uh, to really take it further along the line? What needs more to do? Um, so we definitely want to make the app more robust. We want to add more features to make it more attractive to um, other schools and just give. Um, really, the next thing we're working on is giving college counselors the tools that they need to actually help their kids. Um, uh, see where their kids are at with the scholarship process, help them out throughout the application process. You know, that's where our next is. We're, we're delving into the product itself, mm -hmm. and I want to return to that okay. and really explore it in depth okay. after this important break. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. When I was growing up, I was among the one in six American kids who struggle with hunger. And hungry mornings make tired days. Grumpy days. Bleh kind of days. But with the power of breakfast, the kids in your neighborhood can think big and be more. When we're not hungry for breakfast, we're hungry for more. More ideas. More dreams. More fun. When kids aren't hungry for breakfast, they can be hungry for more. Go to hungeris.org and lend your time or your voice to make breakfast happen for kids in your neighborhood. Hello everyone, I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. We are back exploring the heady atmosphere of Silicon Valley and how does a parenting graduate really become successful on his journey as a startup entrepreneur. But first, in order to become really successful, well, you have to have a product. You have to have a product that appeals to the customer. That's what the Googles, the Facebooks, the Amazons, many companies out there really strive for to 
differentiate yourself in a sea of products, very similar ones sometimes, and how to rise up and, of course, dominate the market and monetize it and survive uh, in, the, in the long run. And that's, that's the economy, the e-commerce, the digital economy in many, many ways. So we are here now to uh, kind of come back and really define the product itself that Travon has been developing and kind of see where it is in the, uh, er what category it falls under and who are the customers and sometimes who are the channels or who are the people who really can promote the product uh, in, in, the, uh, in the economy, in the digital economy. So, so we go back again to your Scholars app. What is it all about and who are the customer? So Scholars app, uh, first and foremost, is on a mission to send one million more students to college by right. um, streamlining the scholarship process. That's okay. what we're all about. Uh, so that's we can, the outcome. That's, that's the goal. That's the outcome. That's yeah. the goal. And okay. it's, uh, to be quite frank, the reality of it. Um, our kids last year got over $1.2 million from our application. We helped to generate um, thousands of dollars of new scholarship money. And, um, you know, we are helping donors actually create new scholarships. Wow. Uh, so, you know, there's the, more students um, got scholarships this year right. um, than last year in Hawaii. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, you know, our end customer is a um, scholarship donor. Right. So we connect students, we connect donors, and we even oh. give tools to college counselors at the local high school to actually be able to monitor their kids and um, assist them with the application process. Okay. Um, but we even then, where there's not even a, um, a lot of scholarships we give away for free, too. And, and can you say the URL on, uh, on, on the show? What oh, is it? ScholarsApp.com. Okay, ScholarsApp.com. Very easy to remember. Uh, so what is what is the uh, your your app your product in the market? Are there other products out there that are competitors? What is the market that you're trying to succeed in? Yeah, um, so I mean, there's a ton of other competitors. This is, I mean, you can hear about other scholarship search engines out there. There's scholarship management softwares. There's even uh, tools already uh, um, built for college counselors to kind of manage uh, the scholarships right. at their uh, high school. We're bringing that all of those process, um, all those different parties together mm -hmm. into one place. And we're taking a significant market share behind that. So in Hawaii, uh, we just got word that almost all Hawaii high schools were at 95% already signed up, and the other school, other high schools already emailed me that they'll be signing up shortly. Um, are all using Scholars App here, public, private, and charter. Um, we have a good portion, of, like I think we're coming up on two to five million dollars of exclusive money uh, that you can only apply through our app. Um, so that's how we differentiate from the competitors. We take over the market. No, you're studying, you're, we're talking about Hawaii, the mm -hmm. state of Hawaii market. Are you doing this in every other state, in all yeah. 50 states of the Union? So we are signing up our first schools already on uh, the Pacific Northwest of the United States. Uh, we're hoping to expand more into the continental United States, and uh, we're, we're doing small test trials in, in the different regions right now. What are the, what are the um, in order to scale, and I think that's what you're trying to do, mm -hmm. uh, scale up, uh, are you looking at it just for the U.S. or globally? Um, right now, our only focus is the U.S., but there's definitely other markets in there that have um, inefficient scholarship processes that we'll like to uh, go into. But right now, just trying to be focused on the U.S. for right now. And and um, what what do people uh, say to you? The, the donor uh, comes to you and says, uh, "Thank you very much. You helped me do what? Get more applications." Uh, so we are we market the scholarship application. We help students apply online. This is generally the first time. Uh, students can apply online for these specific scholarships that we're now taking over. Um, but at the end of the day, we help tailor the student's story and help them submit the application and obviously a bunch more. So the donor actually gets more qualified and completed applications and a better pool to select the recipients from. Mm. And in most cases, actually we're finding out where because they're getting more applications, they actually decide to give up more scholarship money. And how does it help the student? You, you say that yeah. it makes uh, students shine and it really uh, <clears throat> uh, makes uh, the, the student narrative much more clear. W what exactly does the app do to really uh, kind of uh, uh, shine the light on, on, their, um, uh, on their background and, and w what they're capable of in the future? So um, let me just answer what, what did we do for the kids first. Uh, we match them to scholarships. Oh. And it's also, um, you know, it's a pretty accurate match as well. So there's all these different scholarships. I know that they all require different things. We get it down to pretty much almost a 90% match um, to upward majority of the time it's a 100% match 
and we'll tell the students, hey, because you entered X, Y, and Z, or X, Y, and Z things, you are 100% match for this scholarship. Uh, so, you know, we help them out with that to make sure that they get the, the entire list of where they want to go to and what scholarships to apply to. Then, you know, there's simple autofill stuff. So, like, you know, you upload a transcript to our, our website from the college counselor. That transcript can be used right, for right, every right, single scholarship. Right. And we autofill their data. Right. Okay. Small, small stuff like that, but you know, can it kind of automizes it and makes it easier to fill yeah, out. Yeah, you don't have to write. Right. The other option is writing this on a paper and mailing it in. Like, so uh, you have this app going on. What are your next steps? Uh, are you um, uh, scaling this uh, in order to monetize it? In what way? Um, so I mean, we charge the scholarship donors. So um, if you are below a certain threshold, you're free. Um, and then obviously the bigger ones um, for bigger mono applications, they pay us. Okay, so, 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 so there's a way to uh, really provide a service, but you, as the developer, it gets compensated for providing a service. Oh yeah. yeah okay, okay. And, and um, uh, you, you're, you have won awards for this uh, scholarship, uh, this idea and proposal out there. Tell me about uh, your experiences uh, out there uh, competing against others. Um, so, I, like, in what way? Like, are you talking about it, like the UH at the business plan competition? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Um, I mean, yeah, we won a couple of awards. So, uh, we got one from Leeward Community College, the business plan competition. Uh, we got we got one from Pace in the big breakthrough innovation. And, and also, you went to California, remember? Yeah, yeah that yeah. one. Uh, that was the big one. Yeah. Um, and tell me about what 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 was that the competition all about? Oh man, that was that was quite the challenge. <laughs> Uh, so, um, you know, Pace uh, asked me if I want to fly, um, represent UH for the California Dreaming Competition. Uh, from my understanding, it's one of the biggest college business plan competitions in the United States. And I was one of the only undergrad, let alone community college students wow. there. Yeah. Um, the first people I walk into, they're rocket scientists developing <laughs> the new fuel. And I was like, <laughs> what did I sign up for? <laughs> like, but remember, I, I, I did the HCC and KCC after Farrington, but go ahead. Uh, yeah, oh, I mean, but it was just, Rocket scientists, <laughs> yeah, like, right. hard to compete. Gonna, yeah, yeah that level, uh, right. it was definitely a shocker. So, yeah. uh, uh, talking to you today, of course, you're still a young man, and still, you uh, in, in the middle of your journey. But looking back, uh, in, in high school, of course, in college, if there's other people following your footsteps, mm -hmm. okay, other people, what would you tell them, or what would you like to see in terms of courses, or mentorship, or advice, or? Or, um, you know, uh, how do you nurture more of you out of Kalihi, out of Farrington, you know, out of uh, our neighborhoods? So I, I personally think that they're already coming. Um, and, I, you know, I have the luxury of, you know, be, having a scholarship application where, you know, one of our people, uh, one of the things that we ask is, what is your career goal? And I'm seeing a lot more saying that I want to own a small business, I want to have an ice cream parlor, I want to... Uh, do something in entrepreneurship. Right, right. So I think they're definitely coming. Okay. Um, I think uh, how do you like get them to the next level? Uh, just everything you know, what everyone needs is like in my case, right? I need access to technical resources, right, right. and then we need access to capital, um, and then uh, the mentorship. All right. those things combined. But I, I, it's exciting to see that there's already students with the drive and the intent to do it. So now, when you put the resources out there, those. Uh, well, well, let's be more specific. Like in high school, would you have benefited by more courses that would teach you how to uh, make a company, interest rates, uh, loans, uh, uh, you know, venture capital, uh, stocks, bonds, IPOs? Would that have helped you? Um, maybe not the IPO part because yeah. I think like right now it's such early stage. Right, we're just right. uh, trying to find product market fit. Right. But um, I definitely think a computer science class. Okay, okay. That, uh, that okay. would help me out. All right, all right. That's what we're working on. Yeah. Uh, we don't have uh, AP uh, computer science yet, mm -hmm. but uh, we, we, we have uh, ICS 110, in fact, taught by an uh, HCC instructor at Farrington today. But there's only one CS instructor for the entire school of 2,600 students. There's something wrong there. You're mm -hmm. absolutely right. Uh, there should be, and going back to, Kalakau and Dole and, well, other middle schools, you know, you have to introduce programming so that they'll be able to succeed in computer science courses in JavaScript or Java or C++ or Python in, in high school. But you're absolutely right. That is something that we have to work on. Yeah. You're, you're absolutely right. And, and because that will, you don't have to code, but you know what coding is about. So you can work with engineers, you can, you can then ask the right questions mm -hmm. to develop your app, right? I mean, uh -huh. if you don't know the coding, you don't know what the questions they ask. And then uh, that's when I worked at Google, uh, at Google, 
the product managers were at the same level technically as the engineers. You're absolutely right. In order to make the product, you know, right. in, uh, at Google. But um, uh, this is a really ex exciting uh, area because um, I think, uh, w what do you want to do though? Do you want to remain in Silicon Valley or return to Hawaii and do we're, something? And, and what is that something you're going to do back in Hawaii? So we're definitely considering moving back to Hawaii. Um, now there, definitely there's some variables uh, that come into place that we'll find out within the next couple of months. But it, uh, there's a strong possibility that Scholars Apple will be headquarters on Hawaii as of January next oh, year. Oh, great, great. So. Well, that's, uh, that's uh, again, that's the dream of the diversification of an economy, uh, to uh, grow uh, new jobs in, in Hawaii, in the, in the tech field. Uh, but it takes people like yourself who have an idea and attract capital and then can uh, create, you know, the marketing department, the engineering department, the, you know, uh, 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 product management uh, department and so forth, and it needs local talent. And, uh, the, and like you say, if they're coming behind us, I hope that those are the people who can fill in jobs, and some of them may um, launch their own, you know, startups, which mm -hmm. would be really exciting, and yeah. have a, and that's the real dream, which I uh, used to be involved with back in the 80s, and now we're here uh, in, the, in 2018, and I'm especially glad that you, as a representative from our high school, uh, the greatest high school in the state, uh, Farrington, and there's people like Ben Cayetano, uh, uh, governor, former governor, Alan Oshima of HECO, president, uh, many people who are quite successful, but we need more entrepreneurs and, and to create the new digital eco economy. So we're running out of time, and we will, um, you know, uh, take... Uh, all that you said, and I think these are words of inspiration for the next, even next generation or current generation of young people to move ahead. Any last words from you? Um, no, just thanks for having me on, and this is a great opportunity. Appreciate it. Be yeah, best, uh, best of luck and congratulations on uh, your journey, and uh, hope to catch up with you in late 2019 to see where you are and how successful you've become with a uh, scholarship that really helps uh, not only the donors, but in a marketplace to match with students, giving even more opportunities to study through increasing uh, the donor pool, all kinds of new uh, scholarships, and will create a better society for all. This is Rei Tsuchiyama. Thank you very much. Business in Hawaii.